Hello everybody, my name is Thomas Clark and I'm a computer science teacher by day, but recently I've been trying to get more into data science and data visualization. And so this tutorial is aimed at beginners who are also trying to develop some basic data visualization skills. And I'm just sharing some of what I've learned and what I think may be useful to other beginners. Um, so I'm gonna assume that you have some familiarity with Python and with Jupyter Notebooks, which is what I'm running this in right now. So if you're not familiar with Python and with Jupyter, then um, you may wanna start with if, with, with reading up about those before um, going through with this tutorial. All right, so before going into the code straight away, I wanna share where I uh, acquired the data for this, for this project. And so the project that I'll be demonstrating today is mapping Manhattan by distance to the nearest library. So we want to generate a map of Manhattan in New York City where we color code each lot in the city by how far away the closest library is, right? So you can kind of get a sense of where things are, um, how distributed libraries are, etc. Fortunately, and this is sort of the main thrust of the accompanying Medium article with this video, is that New York City makes a lot of data publicly available, and there's great resources for viewing and downloading this data. So let's take a look at where I, I got the data for this project. So there's this wonderful downloader um, for what's called the Pluto dataset. So I'm not exactly sure what Pluto stands for, but it is a, a data set released by the New York City government that has information about every lot in the city. And so we have individual tax lots. We have all kinds of data about them that you can scroll through and see on the right. And you can check which fields, which columns of this data set you want to um, download. Furthermore, you can choose if you want to download from the entire map, as you see right now, or choose a specific subset by drawing a polygon. So for example, you could draw a polygon just around a certain neighborhood and choose to download only the data for that specific area. And when you download it, you can choose which format to download your data in. So this is a really wonderful resource for accessing this, um, this public data set. So going back to our code, let's talk about um, what we're going to do with this data. So first we're going to import some, some basic packages, right? We have pandas, which we're going to use to read CSV files and manipulate data. Um, we have Plotly, which is a really wonderful resource for visualizations and for graphing. Um, and we do have Scikit-Learn, which we're going to use for uh, to help us find the closest library to each point. Okay, so the, the first few things that we're going to run, we're going to run our import statements, and we are going to also have to load a uh, file in the GeoJSON format. So GeoJSON is a common format for uh, geographic data. Um, and in this case, it's going to contain data on all the polygons for each individual plot in that city. So going back to our downloader, you can see that each each individual plot has a certain shape. Most are rectangles, but there are also other shapes as well. All that geographic data is stored in a GeoJSON format. So we're going to end up downloading both that spatial information as well as other information relating to um, the latitude and longitude of each of each plot, the owner of each plot, you can even download the tax uh, assessed value and all kinds of other information. So we're going to run this and visualize what the geographic data looks like. So you can see that we're just loading, we're using JSON to load the GeoJSON file. Okay, so this is a really large file, but you can see that it looks like this. Each feature inside this collection, each point, each lot in the city is represented by some sort of polygon. Now you'll notice that each polygon is also associated with these property field and what looks like a, a field called BBL. So BBL stands for borough, block, and lot. So each lot in New York City is uniquely identified by this combination of what borough it's in, what block, and which lot number. So those unique IDs are going to be very useful for matching up this data set and the geographic information with the other information that's from another data set of uh, latitude and longitude. Okay, so moving on to the next cell, we're going to be reading in information about the Manhattan libraries, right? So we have our information about the lots, but we also need information about where the libraries are. So this actually comes from a separate source, which I'm going to show you as well. So there's this wonderful resource called the Capital Planning Platform for New York City. Over here on the left, you can choose all kinds of different features. So I, as you can see, I've chosen to only download data from Manhattan, but you can choose which you can choose certain boroughs, you can choose um, Brooklyn, Bronx, Manhattan, Staten Island, Queens. So I'm just going to go with Manhattan for all the Manhattan libraries. You can choose schools, parks, um, hospitals, all kinds of public facilities 
um, and visualize them instantly on this map and then export those specific um, facility as a, as a CSV file in this case. So we're going to download information about those libraries, uh, which are here, little blue dots, and download them as a CSV file. Uh, in, in this case, in Manhattan, there's only, you know, a handful, you know, a relatively small number, so to speak, of, of libraries. But you can imagine doing this for, you know, all government facilities in the entire city, of which there's, you know, thousands. So it, it's a really great way to um, visualize this data and easily download it. So the capital planning fa platform is something I would recommend becoming familiar with. Okay, so we're going to read in using pandas. So we're going to create a data frame for our libraries. And the specific columns that we're interested in are the facility name of each library and the latitude and longitude. So for, for this example, that's all we care about. But you could imagine doing other things where you would use different columns as well. Once we do that, we are going to just apply a few transformations. So we're going to, we're going to change each latitude from degrees to radians. So we're going to use the apply function in pandas to take a column and convert it from degrees to radians. We're applying the function math.radians, which converts degrees to radians. We're doing that to both the latitude and the longitude. And then finally, we're going to do one more transformation, which is to zip the latitude and longitude columns together and create a column of coordinates, right? So we're going to create a new coordinate column. And the zip function, what it does is it takes multiple lists and then it zips them together as a tuple. So we have, you know, latitude and longitude separately, and instead we're just going to combine them as an ordered pair. So if we run this and see what the output is, you'll see that it looks like this. We have each library facility name, the latitude, the longitude, and then this new column that we created, which is the pair of uh, latitude and longitude in radians. So it looks like we have about 40, yeah, 43 libraries. Okay, so then for this next part, we are going to load this library data into what's called a ball tree. So this is from the scikit-learn library. Um, and so I experimented around with different ways of trying to find the closest library to each point, and I realized that you need to have an efficient data structure in order to reduce the, the complexity of this process. So fortunately, there's a very efficient data structure called the ball tree for storing this kind of information. So you feed it latitude and longitude information, it stores it in this efficient data structure, and then you can query that data structure and get back um, the closest point to, to a given point, to a given input point, right? So you're creating this structure with all the libraries in it. You give it then any other point with latitude and longitude, and it will very quickly find the closest library to that point. So that's going to be really useful when we're trying to color every single lot in the city by, based on how far away the closest uh, library is. So we convert our library coordinates column that you see right here to a uh, NumPy array and then feed it into uh, a new ball tree. So we're constructing a ball tree. And we're using a metric called haversign, which is related to latitude and longitude. And then let's visualize. So this tree, um, that's just going to be a, a object in memory there. Um, and then we'll come back to that later. OK, so for the next part, um, there's one other data set that we're, we're going to load. And that is just a CSV file that has the latitude and longitude data. So um, we'll just visualize what this looks like. We have each lot in the city. So there's 42,840 lots in Manhattan, and you see you can you can even see the owner name, the lot area, all, all this other information that we're not actually going to use for this particular project. But you see that it has this BBL field. So that's how we're going to match up all of these lots with the polygons that we saw in the GeoJSON file. And then we also have the latitude and longitude, which is what we're going to use to calculate the distance to libraries. Okay, so then we're just going to do a bit of processing on this on this data frame. Um, we are going to just drop uh, invalid rows with invalid numbers in them. We're also going to con convert latitude and longitude to radians, just like we did for the library coordinates. And then similarly, we're going to use the zip function to create a new column for zipped latitude and longitude ordered pairs. So let's see what this output will be. So we now have this column called chord, which has ordered pairs of latitude and longitude in radians. Okay, so now we get to use the ball tree that we made earlier. We convert all our 42,000 uh, coordinate pairs for the 42,000 lots in, the, in Manhattan into a array, and then we query the tree that we created earlier with this array. Okay, and then we're just k equals one, just means we're trying to find the closest one library to each point. And it's gonna return two things. It's gonna return the uh, array of distances and an array that um, tells the index 
of which library it's closest to. And we don't actually care about which library is closest, we just wanna know the distances. So now we get an array that's 42,000 items long, and then for each one, it's going to tell the distance that that, library, or that that lot in the city is from the closest library. So let's take a look at what we get here. All right, so we just added this new column called dist. So now for every single lot in the city, we've associated a value, and that value is the distance to the nearest library. This one line here, let me just explain what, what went on in this line. We have to apply one more transformation, multiplying each number by 3,960. Um, that number is the radius of the Earth in miles, so we're just converting it into miles right there. Okay, so now that we have this data, we have everything we need, right? We have this data frame that has all the um, lots in Manhattan, their latitude and longitude, and the distance to the closest library. And we're going to use Plotly. So Plotly is this great visualization package. Um, and the type of map that we're going to use here is Choropleth. So a Choropleth is where each um, polygon in the, in the map is colored according to um, a certain scale of colors where the values match to a certain um, metric. So in, in this case, we're, we're coloring them by the distance to the library. So you, you need to feed it a bunch of these parameters, but then it does all the work for you. So you tell it which data frame you're going to be basing it off of. So we're, we're, we give it this data frame that we just created. You have to give it the geographic information, so that GeoJSON file. So we feed it that, um, the one I showed you earlier with all the polygons for the city. You have to tell it what key you're using to match up items from your data frame and your GeoJSON file, right? So your GeoJSON file has all the, the polygons, but your data frame has all the values for the distances and they need to be able to match them up. So these two um, parameters here are, are allowing that to happen. Color tells what column of the data frame you're gonna be using to color it. So we're telling it that dist is the value that should give the color to each polygon. And then some other things that, that control the, the settings and the appearance of, of the map. Okay, so I'm gonna run this. It will take a little bit of time because it has to render a lot of different polygons. But when, when it finally does, what we'll see is a map of Manhattan where each each um, polygon represents a certain lot in the city and it's colored according to the distance to the library. So a brighter color will mean that um, it's really close to a library, whereas a dark color will represent being far away from a library. So the examples of libraries was just sort of one, one approach, right? But you can easily imagine doing this for other types of facilities, whether it's schools, hospitals, clinics. And you can imagine that having a map generated like this would be really useful from the point of view of city planning or just visualizing equality of access to different resources in the city. Um, and it just, the Choropleth map is, is a great way of, of visualizing a large amount of data at a glance, right? I mean, this is a tremendous amount of data that just very quickly you're taking a look through and you can start to see patterns. You can start to look for areas that may be underserved if there are any. So it's, it's a really, really powerful way to take um, publicly available data and then come up with a, a, a useful visualization in a small amount of time. So this isn't too much code to write, and we're taking advantage of the really powerful features of Pandas and of Plotly um, to do a lot of the work for us. But without too much code that you have to write on your own, um, you get a pretty interesting visualization. So I hope you found this useful, and I encourage you to use some of those resources that I pointed you to to download the publicly available information on your own and just experiment. Have some fun with this and try to find um, other interesting visualizations that, that you're able to come up with on your own. And feel free to leave some feedback on this video because I would love to hear what your thoughts are. So thanks very much for watching. I hope to see you again. Bye.